Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, always remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, earlier this year in a big moment, um, a game seven, I made a bet against a guy. I believe his name was uh, LeBron James. And then watched uh, the guy come out and uh, destroy my bet, destroy the Golden State Warriors, really just take his marquee game to a place it needed to be to deliver a championship for his team. Well, yesterday I uh, bet against um, Terrence Crawford. Hell, I can pretend it was yesterday. It was actually a few days ago. Uh, it was days before the event. I bet against uh, Terrence Crawford. And Terrence Crawford, who I knew was a great fighter, I had taken against the guy he considers his toughest opponent, Yorkie Gamboa, earlier. Terrence Crawford came out and, painfully for me, delivered a LeBron James performance. Right? Let's call it what it really was. It was a Terrence Crawford performance. You know, when a guy who at the time has a greater than 70% knockout ratio, who at the time has knocked out his last three opponents. When a guy who's a closer comes out on his back foot, lefty, lefty, and does the kind of masterpiece performance, and it was masterful, that Terrence Crawford did, right? A puncher on his back foot in his non-dominant stance, handling Victor Postal, right? Uh, more accurate than Postal, more volume than Postal, scores the only knockdowns in the fight. Then uh, let's just say if you're someone like me who bet against that guy as you're watching that car crash for you, you understand, man, you know, the casino can keep my money. I was dead wrong on this fight. You know, I don't say this lightly. If, I hear Manny Pacquiao's coming back. If, right, the floor up from Manny Pacquiao. If Floyd Mayweather decides to come back, as I see it, there's only one guy he should fight. And it's this guy, Terrence Crawford. I understand that Crawford wants to get out of the game at 32. Marvin Hagler did. Right? He wants to make sure Crawford has five kids. He wants to make sure that he can be, you know, a father to his children. I don't blame him. Right? Lord knows we have a lot of guys who were great fighters back in the day who right now are battling slurred speech or who've had problems or who've dropped off the public light. But I have to say, I mean, honestly, of all the fights I've seen, this fight was easily one of the hardest fights for me to believe as I watched it. I thought Postal came out great. I thought Postal won at least two of the first three rounds. I thought Postal was in a zone. We can debate round four. We can debate round four, but what I have to concede I saw was, you know, the first knockdown in round five is so sudden that Crawford had to make sure to point it out to the referee. Then he knocks down Postal a second time. Right? Then you understood that the Postal start of the fight had been neutralized by this two knockdown 10-7 round. Right? It's from there. For me at least. I was a slow learner on this fight. Even as it happened. 
It was from there that the slow realization came that Crawford wasn't going to switch from righty to lefty and back. That Crawford didn't have to come on his front foot to win the fight. That Crawford could actually win the fight on his back foot. That Crawford's game was such that foot speed wise he was much faster than Victor Postal hand speed wise I thought he matched Victor Postal so look I have no alibi here I'm not looking for one there are gonna be days when you know I make a bet and I get my ass kicked thoroughly I got my ass kicked thoroughly here right I just want people though to understand that this tape is special. Just imagine watching, let's say, an Ali fight, and then you realize that Ali's fighting it as a southpaw. Right? Just just imagine how ridiculous that would be. And he's fluid. Right? There are times when you look at a tape and you can't tell whether a guy is naturally right-handed or left-handed. Folks, this is that tape. He's not fighting a slow-footed or slow-handed guy. He doesn't have time to think. But yet Crawford is there moving. On his left foot, his feet never get tangled. Right? He's countering with power shots. He's getting leverage on punches. Right? This, understand the punch percentage is high. Right? The KO percentage is high. This would be like watching, let's say, someone like Sergei Kovalev on his back foot using his non-dominant hand dancing and beating a guy who's a stick and mover. Right? For me personally, this is the most surprising fight of the year. Let me just say... I knew Crawford was good. Just like with LeBron James, I understood the guy was elite. But just like with LeBron James, after watching him in Game 7, look at his numbers with everything on the line. Right? Same thing with Terrence Crawford. I'm looking at him now and I'm just thinking, damn, you've got to be kidding. Right, so let's enjoy the few years we have left of Terrence Crawford because he's going to walk away from the sport. Right, Marvin Hagler never came back. Trust me, you know, Hagler's last fight was Ray Leonard. Right, trust me when I say had Hagler come back, there were a lot of guys Hagler could beat. A lot of guys. Right? <laughs> you know, all, you know, a guy Hagler beat, Roberto Duran, I believe after Hagler leaves, Duran gets a share of the middleweight title. Right? Well, here, Terrence Crawford really has established himself as dominant. You know, let's just say, I'm going to be hesitant before I even think about betting against Terrence Crawford. Understand. Crawford does things Floyd Mayweather wouldn't even attempt doing, right? Have you ever seen Mayweather come out and fight an entire fight southpaw, right? I mean, I mean, you know, and to dance and do what Crawford was doing, wow. I, I don't know what I can say other than I was wrong here. I congratulate Crawford. I consider this fight a masterpiece. This is a fight I'm going to have to revisit privately from time to time. Because even talking about it here, I'm, I'm, I'm still in awe. I'm still amazed. I congratulate the people here online who, you know, told me, look, man, you're, you're betting on the wrong horse here. You were right. You know, let me say, too. When I pick a guy who doesn't win, I'd rather the guy get knocked out early than to get methodically beaten 
round after round, like Victor Postal was, right? After the fifth round, I hopped online. I was on Twitter. I wanted to get people's thoughts in real time on the fight. <clears throat> I was still rooting for Postal. I thought, how could Crawford continue this back foot mastery? And that's what he did. Round after round, and I salute him for that. Right? My wallet's a lot lighter. I'm lucky to be wearing the shirt in this video. I congratulate Terrence Crawford on really a LeBron James performance. Um, this guy, <laughs> if you're thinking about the best in the sport, pound for pound, you're going to have to come up with one hell of a case to find a guy better than this guy. His KO ratio, as I make this video, by the way, 69%. He's an unbeaten fighter. He just beat one of the other champs in his division on his back foot fighting Southpaw over 12 rounds. Think about that. Let me hear from you. You know, go ahead and tell me, hey, I told you so and stuff like that. If you were as surprised as I was, I hope you leave those comments in the comment section to this video. I didn't know what the casino was doing, right? Making Crawford such a big favorite, right? Let's just say, while I openly say there's some betting bubbles around some fighters, Anthony Joshua, for example, uh, with Crawford, it's earned. Big time. Thanks for stopping by.